more we do, the more people can see it. To combine the animal world and filmmaking, um, yeah, it would be an ultimate dream at the end of the day. And nobody really prints anymore. But when you walk into someone's house and you see this amazing picture up on the wall. What's left on the cave wall is how we remember our history. It's how we depict what happened. It's the vases that were left over. It's the mosaics that we find. That's how we know what was in fashion. That's how we know what the materials they were using to paint, to sculpt. Jazz and modern were my happy places. They're the place that my body felt most at home. I've transformed wanting to do an interesting painting to now capturing emotion and telling a story. The reality that I'm not as fast as I want to be. I spent easily 240 hours trying to do some animation and even that much time was nowhere near enough. I consider myself one of the lucky ones because I have a career that I love with my whole heart and soul. Always very proud to be able to tell people that I'm a dancer and an educator. I am also a wife and a mom here in GP. I actually met my husband in theater. I think we have such a cool story because we were able to share our love of art together in a musical. Another thing that's my heart's desire is I love to travel. Uh, my husband and I have always really prioritized that with our kids too because when we get to step outside of the box that is our place we grow up in, we just learn and we grow and the world's a pretty cool, magical place. Yeah. Dance, it didn't really start until about grade six or seven. I always like to share that I grew up on a farm. I have lots of really, really good memories of riding a tractor with my dad. Shoveling cow dung. I think it's just such an interesting juxtaposition to who I am now. I live in the city. I have a very artistic career, um, but I still love, I love the farm. When I think back where it all started. My grandmother got me into the world of theater. Uh, she always played musicals. She always had a script lying around. I also remember as a kid, she had the best costume closet. And I would go upstairs and I'd put on an outfit and I would come down and do a show for grandma and grandpa. Dance itself, I had a friend that was training at a local studio and they were talking about the recital that they were going to get to do. And they were dancing to a song from Phantom of the Opera. Which was at the time my favorite musical, it was the one my grandmother and I played all of the time. So I went home to my mom and I was telling her this story and I'm like, Mom, I'd really, really like to start taking dance lessons. So for my mom, she was an athlete. She was actually on a track to be at the Olympics until she blew out her knee. Dance and art was like, what? But because of the wonderful human she is, she's like, great, of course. Picked up the phone, registered me, and I loved it from, from the minute I started it, and I've never looked back. Because I started a little late, the start of dance for me is so vivid. You know, most kids start when they're like three or four, and they kind of forget the beginnings. I can clearly remember the first time my mom brought home the bodysuit and tights that I was supposed to wear, and I was like, um, pardon? 
So that was an interesting learning transition. But I always remember really, really loving to move. I can also remember when my dance teacher asked me that I had to do the splits. That I was supposed to learn how to do the splits. I thought she was crazy. The first time I got to perform, I thought it was the greatest feeling ever, and I still do. I also remember that dance was really hard for me. I didn't have a natural facility or what you would consider. Every bit of technique I have, I've worked really, really hard for. So I started actually just taking a good old Saturday morning recreational jazz class. Really got quite hooked with it and so my teacher at the time, she said, well if you really want to do this seriously or grow more in it, you need to take ballet. And then I added modern, kind of just every year I went up the ladder, it was like another discipline. As a dancer, uh, jazz and modern were my happy places, they're the place that my body felt most at home. I take influences from a lot of places, so I do have a great appreciation for our history, like mathematics. Music is always a really great place that you want to pull inspiration from. I swear in my next life I'm going to have to be a Fosse dancer because <laughs> whenever I get a chance to do his work, it feels very at home to me and I just think it's exceptional. I also like uh, when I see a cool costume, that's something interesting to work with piece of fabric but I think influence for dance is everywhere I swear I'm forever tainted on the ability to just listen to music because I listen and start choreographing <laughs> I've been dabbling in the adjudication world quite a while. It's been in probably the last two years that I've been able to really do a lot of it. It's so wonderful to get out into the community, see what is beyond Grand Prairie. I see adjudicating as an extension of my teaching, another way that I get to help and support and influence. Didn't really take dance teaching as my calling until I was probably about 22. I actually went to school for a Bachelor of Commerce degree and during that time I actually got to work as an intern in a financial firm and I spent the whole summer trying to figure out how I was going to spend time at the studio and balance those things out and starting to realize the reality of that was going to be really hard. So I had a really good heart to heart with my dance teacher about could I get certified, get educated, make dance teaching a career. Well she wholeheartedly was like of course you can. Then the next day I applied for the Royal Academy of Dance Teacher Training Program. There it began. I never looked back from then. I love to teach ballet and jazz. Those are really two foundational techniques. Two more seconds. Almost there. Hip hop is a challenge. Literally everything that you do as a ballet dancer, you do the opposite when you're in hip hop. So I was going to a class. I thought I was doing pretty good. And then he put the music on, and it was so fast, and it was so intricate. I struggled through that class, I struggled through a few more, and I started to look around me and realize that there were some really amazing people. And I thought to myself, I think it'll be much more successful if I ask that guy to come work with my kids. So that's what I started to do, is just to look out in my community and my space and be like, who is really, really good at this? I don't think this is my gift. I have so many other gifts to give. When I lose track of time, when I start to get excited, also at the same time I get really relaxed, that's when I know. I'm always looking for what I'm doing, whether it's the music that I've chosen or the movements that I've chosen, that I'm getting a reaction. I feel like art is always a place for us to express. 
what we're going through, what we're feeling. So I always want to open that space up to be like, well, if this is something we're struggling with, maybe we can create it and share it through art. Good volume, Wayne. During the show, this is where we'll be. Misconceptions show that perpetuate over-glamorized images of what the dance world is. I'm not saying that the dance world doesn't have competition. Maybe in the professional world there is some cutthroatness to be able to get an award or get a part in a musical. Sometimes I get a little bit upset because for someone that doesn't know dance, they get an image of how we're raising these young humans. I don't know anybody who runs a school like that. The other common misconception is that we're not strong. We're these delicate creatures, depending on what we're dancing, but we are athletes as well as artists. In the program that I work at, we actually do fitness testing with the other sports, so hockey, soccer, and golf. My dancers are at the top of the fitness test or very high on them in comparison to all the other sports. So we're strong. The trick is, is that as artists, we can't grunt and groan. We don't get to show it. It requires effort and work. Okay, so I'm going to count from five. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, and one. Down, up. So no diggity. That piece for sure, there's like this blend of all sorts of things. It has some really like hip hop grooves that are in it. It's got some fundamental fossey. It's got a bunch of like little classical lines from real traditional jazz. Bills do need to get paid, and there is that expectation in being a productive member of society. But there is a way to have both of those. Spending your life, being able to shape your passion, I just think leads to a happier, more fulfilled life in the long run. I can't imagine doing anything else. I have lots of moments where I start to question, well, am I done? Do I have more still to offer? And the answer is always resoundingly yes.